with Onslaught available to us. With the launch of Into the Light, we now have a new reason to make some different builds, all with the same goal easily get to wave 50 to get the most out of your playtime for your rewards and today we're going to take a look at a very classic void hunter build with one of my all-time favorite exotics that has been in the game since the launch of destiny 2. with this build you will throw out tethers constantly and complete rounds very very fast so before we get into this video please consider subscribing as we have way more builds coming out alongside more builds coming out with the final shape with the new prismatic subclass comment what you've been using or what you'd like to see and consider liking the video to share support for me and the channel so let's get right into this build starting this off we're going to be taking one of my favorite void hunter exotics if not at least exactly my favorite this has been in the game since destiny 2 came out and that is going to be the exotic orpheus rigs which comes with the exotic trait uncanny arrows provides ability energy for each target tethered by deadfall anchors and mobius quiver has an additional shock for Mobius Quiver, this simply lets you fire an extra volley of tethers, which is very nice if you're trying to cover multiple areas or just trying to deal extra damage to champions or bosses. However, for my version of this build, we are going to be taking the Deadfall, which means we get one anchor, but we'll get some ability energy back and we'll be able to top off our super. And I've never really noticed the ability energy thing because I just assume I always have it or I just didn't really notice. But when an enemy gets tethered, we will get 10% of our grenade, melee, and our dodge back, which is really, really good. And like I mentioned previously, I had no idea it did that. So that's honestly just a cherry on top of this entire build we're also going to get super energy back for each enemy tethered up to 50 percent of our super which is amazing because in onslaught we have teammates that can make us orbs and top us off to give us another easy tether for the next round of onslaught when i was playing the other day i did two full 50 version 250 big boy waves of onslaught and i must have thrown my tether out at least if not once maybe even twice some rounds because there are just so many enemies that can be tethered and the teammates i had were dropping me tons and tons of orbs this build is amazing it locks down a whole area and the cool thing about onslaught is you can memorize the spawns of enemies so you could just pull back throw your tether at like the spawn where like all the ogres are and that round is over that round is basically done and you have almost have your super for the next round which again is really really helpful when it comes to weapons i took a different approach with this video because for onslaught there are a lot of different scenarios the waves get harder as we go on and there are boss fights every 10 10 waves so with that i kind of develop different loadouts i would use depending on what wave i'm on or the bosses so with this i'm going to give you what i use where i use them and how they were very effective for waves 1 through 20 or even 30 because sometimes i was able to push it i used my riptide with auto loading and chill clip as this was on always no matter what wave or boss chill clip is just way too good at locking down enemies and preventing them from getting to your adu then i used the returning recluse for this i had beating frenzy and master of arms and this made very 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 quick work of the early levels and for my heavy i took my commemoration it's an lmg they're very good at dealing with ads but you can take whatever you want i will definitely Definitely replace this with Hammerhead once we have access to it. For waves 31 to 50, when things got a little bit harder, I kept Riptide on because again, Chill Clip is just way, way too good. I then swapped to Graviton Lance because I wanted a bit more range with the tougher rounds and the tougher opponents and the ability to chain kills with this exotic is just absolutely amazing. I also kept on Commemoration because again, LMGs are really, really good at just chewing through waves of ads. For bosses, I again, Riptide tied king always stayed on i also put on elsie's rifle for extra range against the ads but i really didn't need it because i also ran leviathan's breath as my heavy option so bosses didn't really last very long so i didn't really have a chance to use elsie's rifle what i would do is i would just throw the tether and then just unload with leviathan's breath and most of the time even on wave 50 the boss was defeated before i even got to notch my last four arrows overall you can use whatever weapons you want Want, but I will always highly recommend using Leviathan's Breath for this build specifically for the boss rounds. It is amazing and it just chunks bosses so easily and makes it so you don't have to stress about them. For our subclass setup, we are going to start with Stylus Executioner. Defeating a weakened, suppressed, or volatile target grants invisibility and true sight. 
After performing a stylus execution, your next melee attack while invisible weakens targets. We're using this mostly for the ability to go invisible during combat. We have fragments, which are going to make this very easy to do, which is very helpful in their later waves of onslaught to stay alive or to resurrect those very unfortunate teammates. We're then going to take Vanishing Step, where dodging makes you invisible. This is for the same reason as Silas Execution, except it is instant and works very good as a panic button if things get dicey. This all also worked out very nicely during the Spark Wave, as you can just dodge, make yourself invisible, and just run through and deposit the Spark with no hassle, and your teammates don't have to be at risk whatsoever. For Fragments, we're going to start with Echo of Reprisal. Final blows when surrounded by combatants grant super energy. What I like to do with this fragment is throw my tether, let everything get anchored and tethered. This will we get our 50% back from Orpheus rigs and then just jump right into the mix and get even more super energy from being close to defeating those targets because it does stack. It does work like that, which is another really good way to get your tethers really quickly in those early levels. As later on, I was trying to really not jump into the mix because I wanted to stay further back. But early on diving into those just pulled tether enemies with recluse got my super back very very fast we're also going to take echo of instability defeating targets with grenades grants volatile rounds to your void weapons with a plus 10 to strength with most if not all the weapons in our loadout being void we will make very good use of the volatile rounds this fragment provides as well as giving us the ability to go invisible from stylus executioner this is the fragment that's going to make it so this way during combat easy invisibility helps us stay alive a little bit and again volatile rounds are also very very good they spread deals extra damage very very nice we then take echo of cessation finish our final blows create a burst of void damage that causes nearby combatants to become volatile Defeating volatile targets create a void breach. In Onslaught, there are a ton of enemies and they like to rush the ADU. So in those higher waves, when they are very tanky, you can damage them as they rush you, finish them. They will then explode with that void energy. They'll get pushed back and they'll become volatile, which then when you defeat that volatile target, you're going to create a void breach and become invisible. And those void breaches are going to come in handy because we're also taking Echo of Starvation. Picking up a void breach or an orb of power grants Devour with a minus 10 to our recovery. Devour is so good every time we defeat a target we're going to get health back and we're going to get grenade energy back which is going to play back into instability which we're going to be able to use to make more void breaches which we are then going to then get more devour out of basically it's going to become an unending devour and unending just throwing grenades everywhere that you want for armor mods, starting with our helmet, we have harmonic siphon, so all our void weapons can make us orbs of power. Dynamo, so when we dodge, we can get some super energy back. And I took powerful friends just because I had the extra energy left over. You can literally take whatever you want. For arms, we have firepower, so grenades can make orbs. Bolstering detonation, so we can get class ability energy from dealing damage with our grenades. And I took firepower, but again, this is one of those situations of I had the extra energy. You do not have to use firepower. For chest, I just have three resist mods that I change depending on the enemies we are fighting. For Hive, I take two Arc and one Void, and for Fallen, I take one Solar, one Arc, and one Void, as they can potentially deal all three damage types. For Legs, I just have three Void Surge mods to boost all our Void weapon damage. On our Cloak, I have Powerful Attraction to pull orbs to us, Reaper to dodge and make more orbs, and then Bomber just to get that extra little bit of grenade energy, but you can really swap Bomber out for any of the class ability gives you whatever energy because they are all going to work here very, very well. The only artifact mod that has any influence on this build is Dragon's Bite, where breaking a foe's shield with Stasis or Strand has a chance to freeze or suspend them. For stats, I prioritize Resilience and Intellect for the high resistance and to to get our super back faster then i try to get decent mobility and discipline for dodging and grenades and then i pretty much ignore strength and recovery due to dodging giving us back our melee and devour will give us our health back Overall, this is probably the best build for Onslaught. And I'm not saying that just to feed clickbait or whatever. This is legitimately one of the best builds for Onslaught. Orpheus Riggs was made for this type of content. Just waves and waves of enemies. This is exactly what it was made for. And honestly, this is one of those situations where, like, I'm glad they nerfed it to the 50%. Because if this thing still gave you back your full super, it would be 
completely broken, especially in content like this. But that is the video. Again, this build is great. If you're struggling to get the Wave 50, throw this on or have one of your friendlies or your allies throw this on. But again, with that, that is the end of the entire video. So please like, comment, and subscribe as it helps me out a ton. Comment down below if you've been using this build or what builds you would like to see me make. And I'll see you guys in the next video.